hello everyone and welcome back to my channel it's another time to bring you amazing news for healthcare careers here in canada and today it's still the turn of the nurses we've been exploring different pathways that have recently been opening up for them and this is one that i've been pretty excited to shoot because it's the Alberta Health Services pilot program for internationally educated nurses. Well, I'm a bit biased because I reside in Alberta presently, but it's an amazing pathway, um, not just because you get licensed to practice as a nurse in the province of Alberta, but also because you get full sponsorship, you get a work visa, you get a job offer, and then you get a completely sponsored work visa to come and start working and practicing basically as a licensed nurse in the province of Alberta. So I'm pretty excited to shoot this one. If you're new here, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Temi Tokwe Adesonya and a lot of people call me Temi. On this channel, as you must have already deduced by now, we talk about how to transition into different healthcare careers here in Canada. And recently we are going to be moving forward. We're going to be exploring transitioning to other healthcare careers in other countries. That's something that is coming up pretty soon. And we also talk about health and wellness, and we talk about career opportunities that are available for healthcare professionals here in Canada. And if that's something that you are into, if that's something that you want to know more about, please subscribe. But without further ado, let's jump right into today's video. All right, guys, let's just get right into it. So I would say this. So first of all, what are we going to be talking about in this video? We're going to talk about what the pathway is all about. We're going to talk about, we're going to give us, I'm going to give a summarized version of the steps that are involved in this pathway. We're going to talk about how you can fully, um, how do I put this now? How you can fully optimize your chances of getting selected or optimize your chances of being successful if you choose to explore this pathway and yeah basically that's what we're just going and then i'm going to give like some little tips from what i have been able to gather so far so what is this pathway all about okay now i must point this out so it doesn't get confusing when it comes to the province of alberta and internationally educated nurses there are basically two different pathways so there is the AHS pathway, which is the Alberta Health Services. So Alberta Health Services is like, well, back home in Nigeria, you know, the way you have different states and you have like different states ministries of health. So for the province of Alberta here in Canada, that is what AHS is to Alberta. So it's like, <coughs> I don't want to call it like the governing body or quote and unquote, the unofficial ministry of health for the province of alberta right and then there's another pathway still in alberta for international educated nurses that's the crna pathway crna is the college of registered nurses in alberta now the crna pathway is just very similar to the nova scotia pathway in the sense that if you are successful you get a license as a nurse in the college but they are not offering you a job it's still your responsibility to get a job. Remember, we did talk about that when we discussed the Nova Scotia pathway, that it's still your responsibility to position yourself well to get a job in Nova Scotia after you've gotten the license if you are successful. So that is the same results if you are successful with the crna pathway i'm not talking about that in this video because i just felt like it's pretty much the same thing you are applying straight to the college i didn't feel like there was a need to make a video on that but if that's something that you're interested in leave it in the comment section and i can look into making a video on that one now the second pathway which is the one a lot of people are exploring is the ahs pathway because not only in that pilot program not only do you get the license from the college but you also get 
sponsored to come and work here. So you don't have to worry about the immigration um, implications of you relocating. You don't have to worry about that. You've gotten the license if you are successful. And then you also get a job offer in Alberta and you're coming directly to come and work. Okay, so that's the one a lot of people are actually looking to explore because it gives you, it's a win-win. Basically, it's a win-win. So basically, what is the program about? So like I said earlier, remember when I was talking about the Nova Scotia pathway, I did tell you that right now, Canada is experiencing shortage of healthcare professionals. And in a way, it makes, I don't want to say it makes me a bit happy, but I mean, it makes me a bit happy for immigrants, people coming from outside the country, because now there are more chances as compared to five years ago or four years ago, there are more chances because actually a lot of provinces are in need of healthcare professionals, not just nurses, even doctors, there is massive shortage, okay? So right now, that's number one, of course, the major reason is the massive shortage. And of course, another thing you should note is that we already talked about this, right? Um, when you come in through this pathway, if you are successful, AHS is going to give you a job in Alberta. So it means without saying, of course, it means that you are going to work in the province of Alberta and then you get the license to practice from CRNA. I think that part is clear, right? Okay. So now what do you need to do in order to start off this application? Let's get right into that. So a very common question, I'm going to put the link of the application in the description. Um, a very common question that I get that I've got it from a few people is that as soon as you open that link to the questionnaire, um, basically to apply for this AHS pi um, pilot program, you have to fill a form, you have to upload your resume, and that's it. Okay, so now let's get into the form. A lot of people have reached out to me saying that, oh, once you open the form, the first thing that it says there is we are looking for um, registered, um, I think, um, do you have a bachelor of nursing degree? Are you a registered nurse? So a lot of people have reached out to me, you know, from Nigeria, especially like, oh, well, I went to school of nursing. I have, I am a registered nurse. That is what is on my certificate, but I don't yet have my bachelor of nursing yet. And I will just say this out. Um, please still go ahead and apply. And I'm going to tell you the reason why, as we talk about filling of the form, I'm going to tell you the reason why. Just go ahead and apply. You are a registered nurse. You have your certificate to prove that. Your nursing council can also back you up to say that you, ha you are a registered nurse. So please go ahead and apply, okay? And you would learn why I said that now. So now we are moving into the filling of the questionnaire. And I must say this, the way this AHS pilot program is going is that they are, from the information you give them on the questionnaire, only, only the information you give them on the questionnaire, that is what they are using to shortlist people. And that tells you something. This is your only chance to impress them. You don't have any other chance to impress them. This is it. It is what they see in that questionnaire that they are going to use in shortlisting. They are not, this questionnaire parts, they are not even yet asking you for IELTS. They are not asking you for your nursing, they are not asking you for evidence from your nursing council, verification of your licensing. They are not asking you for any of that. They are not yet asking you for, okay, they did mention there if you've done NCLEX, that is there. But from people that have been getting shortlisted, it's, it's been found that that is not really a factor at the initial stage of filling the AHS form. Okay. So this is what I would say, right? So there are some basic questions they are asking in the form, like your contact information. And I must point this out, guys. Another amazing thing about this AHS pathway is that there is no um, designated country as compared to the Nova Scotia pathway and even the CRNA pathway where there is a select group of countries that they are doing this from. For the AHS, they are not saying oh, we only want people that are in um, Nigeria, in the Philippines, in India. There's nothing like that. They did not give that description in this pathway, okay? So that is another amazing thing because I've had some of my subscribers reach out to me that are from Ghana and they're like, oh, is there nothing yet for Ghana nurses? Is there nothing yet for Ghana nurses? And I think this is an amazing news for you guys. They are not discriminating. Okay, sorry, I canceled that. <laughs> discriminating is the wrong word, guys, but they are not 
selecting countries. Okay, so that's another amazing thing. Okay, so now let's get right into it. So the information they are asking for when you are filling the form, your contact information. Then they ask you that. Um, they ask you, um, have you completed a bachelor of nursing? I would say this that even though if you don't have a bachelor of nursing degree, don't lie there and go and say you have a bachelor of nursing degree because you want to get shortlisted. Don't do that. There are other opportunities in this same questionnaire where you can optimize your chances. Okay. So they would ask you if you've completed a bachelor of nursing degree. They would ask you if you have, um, if you are a registered nurse. They would ask you, um, how many years experience do you have? They would also ask you the areas of practice that you've been exposed to as a nurse in your country. They would ask you if you've done CPR training, which I know practically every nurse has already done CPR training. They will ask you about that. They will ask you about your English proficiency. At this stage, they are not asking you for, have you done, um, like, oh, what did you score? They are going to ask you things like, oh, um, have you practiced nursing in English within the last three years? Or another option is they'll ask you, did you graduate within a specific number of years? So you can tell at this point that this may be a way to avoid doing the English proficiency exams if you meet this criteria. I don't know if that makes sense, right? And then there's a part where they ask you for additional information and then they ask you to upload your resume. So now let's talk about how you can optimize your chances in at this very level. Remember, they are going by the information you give them at this level, and that's what they are using to shortlist people. So now you want to ensure that your resume is amazing. Like you want to ensure that your resume actually reflects everything that you have done, everything that you have been exposed to. And I say this not because I'm trying to shade anyone, but because I've also been in that situation. I think sometimes when you've not done something like this before, it's very easy to just have a generic resume. I mean, five years ago, I used to have, res my resume would read on the very top, I would have curriculum vitae. Yes, and I know a lot of us back home in Nigeria had resumes like that. So if you've not had an opportunity to do something like this, you may just have a generic resume where you are not fully capturing everything that you are actually doing. I'll give you an example. As a pharmacist, my resume four years ago, job responsibilities, I would put generic things like inventory control, inventory control, stock taking, dispensing of medication, counseling of patients. But there are other things even though that's the generic term for what I used to do, there are still much more detailed things that I was doing that would make me marketable. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was just what I had in my resume. So my advice to people that want to do this, and maybe you already know, for example, that maybe you don't have a bachelor of nursing. You did, you went to school of nursing. You just have a registered nurse. You are just, you are, no, no, you are not. <laughs> you are a registered nurse, right? You need to capture them with your resume. You need to draw them in with your resume. And my advice is seek professional help. Seek professional help. There are lots of immigrant nurses here in Canada that do this professionally for internationally educated nurses. They sit down with you. They have a consultation with you. You talk, tell them about your work experience and they help you to build your CV. They are not fraudulently doing anything there. They are just helping you to package it in such a way that you would not have even thought of it. There are many things we do back home in Nigeria that you don't even Remember, you don't think it counts to put in your resume. For example, you go for outreach, you go for medical outreaches, you go to the rural areas, you go to villages for outreaches. Okay, these are things that these are things that will make you that will optimize your chances because they they see that oh wow she she did this oh she has experience in ICU oh wow she has experience going into the the rural areas oh wow she has this so you need to optimize your chances. Seek professional help. I do not offer this service. I do not offer this service professionally, but there are people who do this and I will try to get the link of somebody. Maybe I think maybe it's email or something and I'll put it in the description. I am not advertising for him. None of that, but it's someone that people are using his services is an immigrant nurse also here in Canada and is helping people. They have been through this process. So they know what these people want to see. 
optimize your chances optimize your chances and i must say these services are usually not free so for you to optimize your chances be willing to spend a little bit of money to get your resume professionally looked at okay so that that would you know level you up at this level to make sure that you're shortlisted so now let's get right into what happens after you get shortlisted okay now you have been shortlisted and so what happens is if you are shortlisted you will get an email from ahs telling you congratulations you have been shortlisted for the ahs pathway blah blah, blah. excuse me and they will tell you the next steps and this is where it gets interesting so because the next steps they are going to basically direct you to certain other areas okay so the first thing is they will give you your own links to these areas number one they'll give you your own link to crna the college of registered nurses in alberta remember i did tell you that even though ahs is giving you a job and they are sponsoring your work visa crna is still the one that would give you the license so you still have to quote and unquote go through the crna pathway to get a license from crna I don't know if that makes sense, but AHS will tell you this is these are the things they need you to do next. They'll tell you CRNA, they'll give you the link to go to CRNA, then they'll tell you your NNAS. Okay, so they'll tell you <clears throat> you need to get your credential evaluated with NNAS, and you also need to go through the CRNA pathway. Okay, they will also tell you that you need to do criminal record check. They will tell you these things it's usually self-explanatory it's not it's not usually something that when you when you open it you don't understand what they want you to do it's usually pretty straight to the point okay so now with the nnas this is where it gets interesting now remember we talked about the nova scotia pathway we said they bypassed the nnas by the way nnas is national nursing assessment service what they do just like the way you have wes right what they do is that they help they evaluate your credentials to ensure that indeed you have the education and the knowledge of whatever it is that you are applying for so if you're applying to be like a registered nurse they want to see the education that you've gone through right now a lot of pathways are bypassing nnas because nnas has been known to take time sometimes it takes up to 12 months so lots of foreign trained nurses are usually excited at pathways that does not involve nnas however this nnas this is your own nnas link that comes with you being shortlisted by the ahs pathway it's very fast because remember you're not going through nnas you're going through ahs and you get your own link and here is the kicker guys ahs has already paid your assessment fee so you don't have to pay the money. When I tell you that this pathway is amazing, you don't have to pay the money. The normal money for assessing your credentials with NNAS is $650 US dollars. Convert that in your currency and let me know what that is. $650 US dollars. However, AHS has already covered the cost. They have already covered the cost. That's why you are getting your own link. Your own link. So you click the link. And then they will tell you the process of you sending your credentials to them. You don't have to pay anything. Maybe you have to just pay at your school or at your university for them to send the credentials to them. Or maybe, and then you have, maybe you have to pay for Korea, but you are not paying NNAS. That is $650 US dollars out of the way that you don't have to worry about. So that's one thing in the next step of getting shortlisted is then you have to do that. The second step is then you then have to go through CRNA. Okay. When you go to CRNA, you have to create an account profile and then they take you through different stages that you must go through. And part of that, which is why I'm coming to, is that they would ask you for NCLEX. They would ask you if you have done your NCLEX exam, right? Or if you have plans of doing your NCLEX exam soon. Now, like I said, we've talked about this, that at every level you have the, at every stage of this pathway, you have the opportunity to optimize your chances. So I will say it's in two ways. Number one, if you are able to write your NCLEX, please do. If you are able to write the NCLEX exam, if I do know this, lots of people have said there's no center in Nigeria, there's no center in Nigeria. If you are financially able to travel to a country 
that has test centers for NCLEX exam, please do. I do foresee that with the way these pathways are opening up, there should be a test center coming to Nigeria soon because there are too many pathways opening up for nurses and it's just, I don't want to use the word unfair because at the end of the day, it's not their fault. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are missing out of these chances because they've not written NCLEX. And that's because they don't have test centers or because they cannot afford to travel to another country to go and write the exam. So I would say this, if you can do this, if you are currently doing your master's in the UK and you're a, you're a registered nurse, please explore this, this opportunity that you have. Or if you can travel to another country to go and do it. Or if you are currently in another country that has a test center, please do it. Okay. Knowing that it's one of the things they ask for, it optimizes your chances. That's one way of optimizing your chances. Another way is that, another way to note, don't let me say another way to optimize, or another thing to note is that there are chances that they are given, that they are, people are claiming sometimes if they really want you, based on the way you sold yourself to them, if they really want you, you can get a degree. Okay, how do I put this now? Okay, so when you come into CRNA, when you're doing your CRNA assessment, when they've gotten your NNAS reports, right? They've gotten your NNAS report, they've looked at your credential evaluation, they've looked at, okay, this is what she has done, this is the number of years of experience that she has. There are two ways that there are two things that can happen. They can be like, okay, wow, we are going to give her a license as a registered nurse based on all of these things that she has provided us, she's good to go. They can say, oh, well, maybe based on our NCLEX results, um, based on this, based on that, maybe we would give her LPN, which is licensed practical nurse. Another thing that they could do, which is why I tell people to just, just do it, just apply. Because another thing they could do is they could bring you on on another level called a graduate nurse. A graduate nurse is basically somebody that has graduated from school but has not done their licensing exam. That is another way that they could bring you in. So don't close your eyes to it. Don't close your mind to it because, oh, I don't have NCLEX. Oh, I don't have NCLEX. Oh, what's the point? I don't have NCLEX. No, you just, you never know. You never know. And another thing is you never know the opportunities that will open up for you to even be able to get a place to write NCLEX. So if you've not started the application now, what if in one month's time a test center opens up in your country or an opportunity opens up for you to travel to another country to go and write the NCLEX exam? That's the way I see it. Don't close your mind to it. Just go ahead and apply. Go ahead and do your NNA assessments. You're not paying. Go ahead and do it and get going with it. Okay, so another thing to note is that when you do get to this CRNA portal, it is then decided if you should do IELTS or not. However, it's been found that people that have, if you've been practicing within the last three years in English, in English, yeah, I believe that's what it is. Yep, practice nursing in English within the last three years. Or if you graduated from education of nursing taught in English, they may bypass the IELTS for you. Most likely they would, to be honest. Most likely they would. But that's the criteria, that, that's the caveat they are giving, okay? That, oh, okay, have you been practicing within the last three years and it's been in English and you can prove that, right? And then another way to optimize your chances at this level, remember you're sending your credentials to NNAS, especially if you're someone that you don't have NCLEX. And like I said, if you can do NCLEX, please do NCLEX. It optimizes your chances. Now, actually, if you are someone that you don't have NCLEX, make sure that your school is sending something robust to NNAS. Something that they will look at it and be like, ah, these girls, this man's education is sound. Make sure that you, you, you are... I don't know because sometimes you cannot, you, you really cannot control it, right? Your school is sending what your school is sending. But in a way, just if you can, make sure that your school is sending something robust to NNES, something that is really capturing what you did. Like I said, you want them to want you. You want them to look at everything from the, from the resume to the this one to the that one. You want them to want you. 
okay that's another key way of optimizing your chance and i must mention with the ielts if you are told to do ielts maybe you don't meet the criteria or they feel like you don't meet that criteria is the the minimum score is for listening seven writing 6.5 reading 6.5 and speaking seven okay all right guys so that's basically that for the next stage after you get shortlisted when you go through the crna application so i already talked about that and then in the crna application there may be some fees in, involved for example they would ask you things like professional liability insurance they will ask you things like verification of your credential you already did that through nnas but they may also want to hear from your nursing body in your home country so apart from you submitting from your school, now they want to probably hear from your nursing body stating that indeed this person is actually licensed as this designation in India, in Nigeria, in wherever country that you're from. Okay, so those are the little things that they will ask, but it's pretty straightforward, like it's well detailed. When it, once you get there, it tells you, you need this, you need this, you need this. It opens up, you have a portal where you can check your progress, okay, and you can see the things that you still need to do, okay? Okay, so guys, if you are successful at, we've moved on to the next stage, you've gotten shortlisted, you've done NNES assessment, you've gone through CRNA, you've given them professional liability insurance, you've done your criminal record check, you've done all of those things and you're successful, CRNA then gives you a license and that license depends on what they have assessed all through that process, all through these things we just listed. So they can decide to give you a license as a registered nurse, which is almost certain for somebody that passed their NCLEX, that has passed their NCLEX and met all the other requirements, or they can decide to give you a license as an LPN, be it maybe based on the results of your NCLEX or be it based on the evaluation they got from your credentials, they can decide that, okay, we're going to give you the designation, we're going to give you the license of LPN. When you come to Canada, you can decide to then pursue the transition process to become an RN, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, they can also give you GN, which is graduate nurse, okay? And I explained what that meant earlier. So these are the things they can give you at these different levels. And another thing, like I always, because people use this NCLEX thing as, ah, I'm not applying, I don't have NCLEX, I don't have NCLEX. Just apply. You don't know what is going to happen along the way. And we've already talked about how you can optimize your chances. We already talked about this, how you can optimize your chances of being, like let the light shine on you. Let them want you. <laughs> let them want you okay and i mentioned earlier that in this process you don't have to worry about the duration of nnas because as compared to you going through nnas on your own this one is much faster okay now lots of people have asked how long does this process take how long does this process take um we don't know it's a pilot program like i said and that's why i like people to jump on it as fast as they can because um we really don't know when it's pilot. So something that is pilot, it can either stay or it can go. If they find it to be successful, they can they may continue it. And if they feel like it wasn't so successful, they may stop after a certain period of time. So just take advantage as soon as you can. So so people are claiming that this may take between three to ten months. Some people are claiming that it may take six to eighteen months. Just like any other process, even if you were doing express entry, it doesn't happen immediately. Like it takes time, right? So yeah, so that's it about the duration. So now when this happens, you get your designation. Now, AHS is aware because AHS was the one who told you to go through all those pathways, right? So once you get designated, they are aware. The next thing is to offer you employment. They have a form of interview like a um questionnaire that they will send to you so they want to like prepare you for travel they have like a form of informal interview um once you've gotten your license and they were the ones who shortlisted you for that you are almost certain that you've already gotten a job but you still have to get the interview they want to they want to get to know you and all of that they want to tell you more just like the way an interview goes right so i think this is usually done over the phone i am not sure but there's usually a form of interview that happens after you've gotten 
the license from CRNA. And then they give you a formal job offer. Make sure that you review your contracts very well okay because most likely they are going to put you on a contract to work in alberta i mean they brought you in <laughs> they brought you in right so they're going to put you probably on a contract to work in alberta for a particular number of years please read the contract and please um abide with what you've signed like if you sign the contract that says you have to work in the province of alberta under ahs for a particular number of years if it's something that you are okay with in the beginning when you were signing it when you get to canada just make sure that you abide by whatever you you signed it's just a thing of integrity just make sure that you actually follow through okay um all right so at this point i would encourage people that if you do get to this point congratulations um at this point you want to talk to them like they are your potential employers so if you're married you want to bring up the issue of you know you want your spouse to come with you you want your family to come with you what are the provisions that they are they are willing to make you know it's it's like i said they want you <laughs> they want you so this is the time to actually voice it out and be like oh i'm a married man or i'm a married woman and you know i it's my first time in canada i would love my family to be with me are there any provisions they are not stating anything right now stating like oh they are going to give spouse our work visa and all of that but it's ask ask oh i have a son and i have, I have my husband you know is there any provisions that you will be willing to make you know for me to be able to come with them okay they are a great source of support to me they are, you know just everything is packaging you know but make your own make what don't don't let it be all about what they want from you also state what you would like go through your contracts in great detail like read every single thing so that you know what you're getting into and as soon as you sign the offer then it's up onto the it's next onto the sorry the immigration stage of it where you have to apply for a work visa but remember you have an employer that is now sponsoring your work visa okay there will be other things little things there police clearance you have to do medical exams these are little things that comes with you immigrate you relocating to another country anyway um for you to apply for your work visa you need the proof of employment here in canada which you already have from ahs so those are the little things and then you arrive in canada the claim right now is that you would be received in edmonton you will go through a form of orientation slash training now i must point this out that if you if you are successful at this most likely you are going to be working in rural areas in alberta but to be honest the rural areas are not like rural areas i don't even i think rural areas is the wrong word i think i should be saying smaller towns let me put it like that like smaller towns so the only difference is just that okay they are not as busy the population of course is much smaller and in my opinion the cost of living is also cheaper you make good money you're able to save more as compared to somebody that is living in the major cities so i think it's to me i think it's still a win-win for starters because most likely maybe you get like a two-year contract you have to work with them you can then decide that you know you want to move to the bigger cities right so really guys that's about it for this pathway this ahs pathway that's the information that a lot of people have right now and i always put this disclaimer i am not a representative of ahs i am not a representative of ilcc i'm not a representative of crna i am just here on this platform to provide information to people that would need it to get you started with the basics basically <laughs> yeah so really guys that's all about it um if you want to uh, if you want more content if there are specific pathways that you've heard about and you want me to research and bring to you you can leave it in the comment section like i said i will try to get the contact details of the immigrant nurse here in canada that helps people with services such as as um, evaluating your resume okay i'll try to get that contact and put it in the description box if i can if i cannot get his contact i will put his youtube channel there and you can reach out to him on your own okay yeah guys so thank you so much for watching to this point if you enjoyed this video or if you found it informative please give it a thumbs up um a video getting a lot of likes helps it to be 
more accessible to people that actually need it okay so youtube algorithm kind of works like that so if you found it informative so give it a thumbs up so that people who need it can actually get to view this video thank you so much for watching if you are going through this pathway i wish you all the very best a hundred percent success please don't forget to make yourself sell yourself in the right way and i must point this out guys um do not be fraudulent in any of your responses because you know that if you say yes or if you say no it gives you a higher chance um be true to who you are be honest in your application and optimize your chances we already talked about how to do that so thank you so much guys for watching this if you want to watch much content more content on other pathways that i already talked about i'm going to leave them in the description i'm going to post it at the end screen thank you so much for watching i appreciate your support if i have not said that thank you for subscribing thank you for viewing thank you for sharing thank you for the words of encouragement i don't take it for granted at all guys i don't thank you so much i appreciate you all till my next video ensure that you stay informed bye guys